And you know, Matt, in Northeast Ohio, there's so much to do, and there's no shortage of places to believe to be haunted, from Squires Castle North Chagrin Reservation to the Agora Theater and to the Fairport Harbor Lighthouse. That's just to name a few. Yeah, there's a lot. Now tonight, our master storyteller, Leon Bibb, takes us on a trip 87 miles southwest of Cleveland, where he explores the haunted tale of a young woman named Celie Rose and why many believe her presence still mm -hmm. lurks. I am at times a traveler, often with no specific destination in mind. So I drove that day, unaware my route would take me through a picturesque area called Pleasant Valley. A tranquil drive until trouble. But maybe help is across the way. That old farmhouse, I go there, still unaware I have stumbled into a macabre Halloween story. Far off the main roads of Richland County, you and I have moved into another dimension. Hello? Anybody home? Where a strange old tale still unfolds in a haunting way. Step easy across this threshold. You have entered an unsettling zone of ghosts and the unexplainable. Welcome to the Seely Rose House. <laughs> Mark Sebastian Jordan is a teller of an intriguing tale of murders in this house. You have stepped into the home once occupied by the 19th century Rose family, now part of the sprawling Malabar Farm State Park of Lucas, Ohio. The Roses were a family of four, parents David and Rebecca, and two children, Walter and Seely. In 1896, 23-year-old Seely described then as having a childlike mind developed feelings for a teenage neighbor. Seely began to assume that there was a lot more going on than actually was. The teenager, Guy Berry, shunned Seely's romantic overtures, but she persisted. So much so, her parents ordered her to stop. But in her mind, Guy was hers. Mark Sebastian Jordan wrote, Seely planned to kill any who stood in the way of her romantic attraction. Her whole idea of getting rid of her family was so that she could run away with Guy Barry and live happily ever after. Enter the box of rat poison the family used to keep rodents away. She took a spoonful of the rough on rats, mixed it into the cottage cheese, and then brought it here into the house to serve to her family. Death claimed Father David and Brother Walter. Still, the poisoned mother, Rebecca, held on. Richland County police and prosecutor moved in. An inquest at the nearby schoolhouse. Seely was suspected, but forensics of the day could not tie her to murders. On Seely's side, Mother Rebecca, whom she had also tried to kill. She would look at her mother, and then she would give a carefully rehearsed word-for-word -word answer. Then she'd look back to her mother. Her mother would nod. Seely was all Rebecca Rose had left, so they lived together. That is, until Seely rat-poisoned Rebecca a second time. This time it was fatal. Within sight of the Rose family's burials, Seely confessed to a friend that, yes, she had done it. She got the story out of Seely as they sat on the steps of the Pleasant Valley Lutheran Church. At age 23, Seely Rose stood trial, but was found not guilty by reason of insanity and sent to a state hospital. She remained until she died at age 61. Today, the Rose family home is part of Malabar Farm State Park and open for tours. A frequent visitor is Mark Sebastian Jordan, who has chronicled the story in his book and believes Seely is still here, and so are her victims. This is the room where people have most often reported feeling a sort of, uh, it's almost like walking into static. I can tell you I do feel something strange. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just a, it's just a, a funny feeling inside me. And, and I'm feeling that rumble. It, it's, like, it's like the floor is vibrating a little bit. The Pleasant Valley Cemetery is where the roses, all but Seely, are buried. 
Almost within sight, the house where a family was murdered. In a window, a scarecrow, someone's Halloweenish prank. The scarecrow may not be alone. Some claim they have seen Celie Rose here, watching, guarding. And so we will leave this haunted place of shadows. But before, one more thing. Hey, Leon. How about one for the road before you go? Mark, uh, no thank you. Uh, maybe next time. This is Leon Bibb offering for your consideration a ghoulish tale far off the main roads of Richland County in a place which exists betwixt and between life and shadow.